So I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about local maxima and minima on a graph looking something like this. So last time we said that the local maximum was going to be a point up here where the gradient was going to be equal to zero and a point down here would be the local minimum where the gradient was also equal to zero. And we even went about finding the x coordinates of those two points. And so I've come up with a different graph this time to make it a little bit easier for us. But let's quickly go about differentiating this and finding the coordinates of those two points. So dy dx here is going to be equal to x squared plus x minus 12. Hopefully you remember how we did that, bringing the power down, subtracting 1. So there we go, that is our gradient expression there. So how did we find these two points? Well, we set this equal to 0, because at those two points the gradient is going to be equal to 0. So we can now factorise this, so factorise the right hand side, we get x plus 4 in one bracket and x minus 3 in the other. So we know that our x value must be minus 4 or x must equal 3. So because we have the graph here, we know straight away that this maxima must have an x value of minus 4 and this minima, this local minimum, must have a x value of 3. But what about if we didn't have this graph, if we, if we didn't draw it, how could we determine which one of these x values belonged to the maximum or to the minimum? So there's two ways of going about this. The first way is testing points to the left and to the right of the local maxima or minima. So let's start off with x equals minus 4. So we know at the point x equals minus 4 that the gradient is going to be equal to 0. Well, what about, so when x equals minus 4, dy dx is equal to 0. Well, what about if we pick a point slightly to the left of minus 4, so it's going to be more negative, so, so only slightly to the left of, so only slightly more negative, so minus 4.1. So let's put that value there into our function for the gradient, and we get a value of 0.71. So the gradient to the left of this point is a positive gradient, so it looks something like that. And at the point, at the point minus 4, it's flat, so it's going to look like that. Well, what about to the right of it? So more positive than minus 4. Let's pick minus 3.9. Let's put that into our gradient function. And this time, this gives us a gradient value of minus 0.69. So now this is a negative gradient. It's going to be sloping downwards rather than sloping upwards like previously. So on the right here, I've sketched out the direction of the three gradient values. So we see that to the left of minus 4, the gradient's going up. It's a positive one. At minus 4, it's 0. And then to the right, it's going down again. It's a negative gradient. So if our graph at around minus 4 is shaped like this, we know that minus 4 at the top is going to be a local maximum. Because the points either side are going to have smaller values than at the point x equals minus 4. And if we go back up onto our proper graph, we can check this. So here we go. You see the shape here is with minus 4, with x equals minus 4 at the top. And either side, we have a positive on the left, a positive gradient on the left, and then a negative gradient on the right. And this is what 
a local maximum looks like. Now we can do the same with x equals 3. So let's give that a go. So x equals 3. We know at the point x equals 3 that the gradient is equal to 0. So now let's try a point to the left and let's try a point to the right. So I encourage you to do this yourself and sketch it out, see what it looks like. So I'll go through it quickly now with you. So slightly to the left, so slightly smaller, we get dy dx is minus 0.69. And now slightly to the right, so let's pick 3.1, so slightly bigger. And we get that the gradient is now positive 0.71. So as you can see, it's actually symmetrical compared to those previous values that we used. So now let's do our little sketch on the right. So we've got a negative gradient, then zero, a gradient of zero, so a flat line, and then a positive gradient, it's going upwards. So it goes down, flat, and then up. Well, this is going to have to be a local minimum. This point x equals three, it's right at the bottom, and points either side, you can see that they're going to be, they're gonna have bigger values than at the point x equals three. The y value is gonna get bigger either side, so it's a local minimum. So that is the first way of finding out whether a x value corresponds to a local maximum or a local minimum. So before, when we solved our equation, when we solved our gradient equation equal to zero, we solved for the two x values, we found the two points where the gradient was equal to zero. We didn't know whether it was a local maximum or a local minimum, but by testing points either side, just sketching out those gradients, we can determine whether it's a local maximum or a local minimum. Okay, so now let's have a look at our second method. So if we go back up to our graph, so we've got a cubic graph here, but what about our gradient expression? This here is a quadratic, and so this here will have its own graphical representation. We could plot on the y-axis normally, we could plot dy dx, and on the x-axis we could plot x, and we'd get a quadratic graph. But let's think about what that means. Well, if dy dx is a rate of change of y per change in x, so what that means is there's a change in y and there's a change in x and there's a rate at which that happens, which is how steep the slope is. What would happen if we differentiated this again? Well, that would be the rate of change of the gradient per change in x. And this is quite a tricky concept to wrap our heads around, but it looks something like this. This is the notation that we use when we do something called the second derivative. So it's d2y over dx squared. So we're gonna to have to differentiate this right-hand side again. So we get 2x plus one. So this is what is called the second derivative of our original function. And what does this tell us? Well, let's think about the gradient at points on this original graph. So over here, my gradient is quite steep. It's gonna have a big positive value. Now moving to the right, my gradient is getting smaller and it's getting smaller and smaller as I continue moving to the right. So you can see that it's getting less steep as we move to the right until we get to my gradient is equal to zero. But my gradient doesn't suddenly start increasing again. My gradient keeps decreasing. So it starts off a big steep value and it goes to zero. Then it gradually becomes negative, becomes more and more negative until at some point around here, my gradient starts getting more and more positive. It becomes shallower and shallower until it gets to zero. And then as we move to the right, it becomes more and more positive. So my gradient is actually changing as I go across my cubic graph. So when my gradient is getting smaller, 
So when it's going from a big positive value all the way to a negative, when my gradient is getting smaller, then my change in gradient is going to be a negative value. It's because my gradient is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. d2y dx squared, this rate of change of my gradient, is going to be getting smaller and smaller as well. And when my gradient goes from being really negative to less negative to zero to more positive, it's getting bigger between this blue circle here all the way to the right. So my gradient is increasing. The rate of change of my gradient is going to be positive. So d2y dx squared is going to give me a positive value there. So let's use that information now. Let's use that information. So we said that d2y dx squared, so my second derivative, when that is greater than zero, let's just go back up to our graph. So when my gradient is getting bigger and bigger, so it starts off a negative number and it's gradually becoming more positive. My gradient is becoming bigger. So the rate of change of this gradient is going to be greater than zero. This corresponds to a local minimum. And so the opposite, if d2y dx squared is less than zero, so if my rate of change of gradient, so if my gradient is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, then this section here is going to correspond to a local maximum. Now remember, these are only true, so these are only true for when dy dx, so when my actual gradient is equal to zero. Obviously you could put any point into my second derivative and be able to work out whether it's positive or negative, but when we put the x value for dy dx is zero, so when the gradient is zero, these are going to have to correspond to a section of this graph where either the gradient is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, or my gradient is getting smaller and smaller. So we worked out that d2y dx squared, that's, the, that's how we say it out loud. So d2y dx squared is equal to 2x, what was it, plus 1, I think? Yes, 2x plus 1. We can put in our x is minus 4 and our x is 3. We can put those numbers into here and we can see whether the answer is greater than 0 or less than 0. And that's going to tell us at those points whether it is a local minimum or a local maximum. So let's put x is equal to minus 4 into here. So 2 times minus 4 is minus 8 plus 1. So d2y dx squared is going to be minus 7. So if d2y dx squared is less than 0, we're talking about a local maximum. Let's go up and check if at minus 4 it's a local maximum. Yeah, on the left here we have our local maximum. And so if we put, if we put x is equal to 3 in there, we find dy, d, sorry, d2y dx squared, we get positive 7. And now this here is greater than 0, so we're talking about a local minimum. So there, two ways to determine the local minimum and local maximum points on a graph. The first method we used was testing either side of the point. The second method we used was putting the x value of the point into the expression of the second derivative. So we derived the original equation twice, and we put the x value in, and we checked, and we looked and saw if it was bigger or smaller than zero, and that corresponded to either a local minimum or a local maximum.